What's up guys, my name is Timbo and today we're talking about Hideo Kojima's latest game, Death Stranding. Kojima has always been known to have a distinct, rather weird style when it comes to gaming, and Death Stranding is no different. Featuring tons of strange fourth wall breaking moments, quirky character names, and naked Norman Reedus with a little baby inside of him. Death Stranding is the first game Kojima has made pretty much all by himself, with his studio Kojima Productions developing independently for the first time. The end result was one of the most polarizing things you will ever see, with review scores all across the board from perfect 10s to mediocre 6.8s. This video is by no means a review, but for what it's worth, I thought Death Stranding was absolutely incredible. I don't think you're ever going to play a game like this, ever. It's really a one of a kind experience. The opening hour of this game and the ending two hours are essentially all cutscenes. There's literally a full length movie at the beginning and end of this with roughly 50 hours of gameplay in between. With that being said, this video is made for people who have played the game and are confused or for people who haven't played it but still want to know the story. Despite this, just know that no matter how detailed I am, nothing is going to be able to replace the experience you get from playing Death Stranding yourself. One of the most potent aspects of Death Stranding is its story, as in typical Kojima fashion, it's one confusing dump of information. But fret not because I've got you covered, as today I'll be breaking down the story beat for beat and explaining the ending. I know some people have been making the claim that there's more than one ending, but I can assure you, even though the game sets itself up to give you a choice, if you do anything other than exactly what Kojima wants you to do, you hit a game over screen. There is only one ending. If you find this video helpful, a positive rating is greatly appreciated. And for more explained content on other games every Friday, make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes. With all that out of the way, let's hop into the shower with Guillermo del Toro and find out. And yes, you heard me right, that actually happens in this game. Shh. Death Stranding begins with some of the best looking images I have ever seen grace a PS4. Seriously, I bought this thing like six years ago and I had to do a double take with how photorealistic this is. After several animal deaths, seriously, what the heck? We see our protagonist Sam crash his bike and find shelter in a nearby cave. Sam is trying to wait out the time fall, an otherworldly rain which accelerates the progress of time with pretty much everything it comes into contact with. Pretty much America's worst nightmare, looking old. Perhaps the worst thing about time fall is what it typically brings, beached things or BTs get really close and personal with Sam. Fragile aids Sam in evading the BTs. BTs are entities from the other side that have stranded themselves on Earth following the Death Stranding and are one of the main enemies in the game. Fragile, which I'll admit I'm only pronouncing it that way because that's how the game says it, quickly leaves the scene. Sam continues his delivery and enters Central Knot City, only to be stopped by a guy named Igor. Igor tells Sam a citizen has just committed suicide. In this world, this is especially no bueno as the dead body is on the verge of necrosis. 48 hours after cardiac arrest, the corpse will, as termed in the game, go necro. When this happens, the deceased will become a BT. If a BT eats a human, it causes a void out, which is basically a giant explosion that results in a crater. I know there's a lot of world building and fancy terms to get adjusted to at the beginning of the game, but hopefully you're hanging in there with me. To prevent necrosis, a corpse disposal team is dispatched to transport the body to an incinerator for a proper cremation. And you're probably asking yourself, why is the incinerator so dang far away? The explanation is kind of science fiction mumbo jumbo, but basically the smoke emitted from burning a necrotic corpse is dangerous, so they can't burn the bodies near the city. The team quickly finds out they're gonna need a bigger truck, because they end up stumbling right in the middle of a bunch of BTs. Igor ends up having to kill his partner to prevent him from being eaten by the BTs. He then tosses his BB on the ground and stabs himself multiple times to prevent the same thing from happening to him. Oh yeah, and that corpse. Well, they weren't exactly able to transport it to the incinerator in time either. Great job, brethren. Wait a, wait a B. It's here where we see Sam's first of many visions on the beach. The beach acts as a sort of limbo, a place between the living and the dead formed from humanity's self-conception of death. Each person has their own beach, meaning all beaches aren't necessarily the same. Unlike the world of the living, the beach does not experience time. This allows massive amounts of data, and sometimes people, to be sent, quote, back in time. It's revealed that Sam is a repatriate, someone who has the ability to come back from the dead. In the world of Death Stranding, when somebody dies, their soul is sent to a place called the Seam, which is basically like purgatory. Repatriates have the ability to guide their soul through the Seam and come back to life. 
When Sam does this, he is left to see the void out that destroyed Middle Knot City. All in a hard day's work if you ask me. Sam awakes in Capital Knot City and meets Dead Man, played by Guillermo del Toro. Dead Man introduces himself as a doctor from Bridges, the company formed after the Death Stranding to reconnect the fractured society of the United States. What a sentence. The Death Stranding being a series of explosions that resulted in the worlds of the dead and the world of the living becoming connected, causing drastic consequences for the ecosystem and human society. Long story short, people died in the explosions, the corpses went through stages of necrosis and became BTs, BTs consumed other humans, and led to more void outs. Death Stranding also introduced the substance Chiralium into the world of the living. This caused a lot of environmental changes, the biggest one being Timefall. Either way, Dead Man asks Sam to deliver morphine to the dying president of the United Cities of America or the UCA. Little plot twist though, the president Bridget Strand is Sam's mother. There Sam also runs into Die Hardman, who is the director of Bridges and was Sam's former boss before he left. Alone in the room with Sam, Bridget pleads with him, trying to get him to rejoin Bridges and help rebuild America. Sam isn't wanting any part of that, so Bridget reaches out for him, falls off her bed, and frickin' dies. I'll be waiting for you on the beach. <gasps> what a klutz. Dead Man and Die Hard Man essentially force Sam into joining Bridges and assign him to transport Bridget's body to the incinerator. They make sure to keep Bridget's death unknown, stating this must be done with utmost secrecy. Sam reaches the incinerator and cremates her body, but when told by dead men to dispose of Igor's BB, Sam refuses. Despite the bridge baby being marked for retirement, Sam uses it to assist him in evading an incoming horde of BTs. Bridge babies, or BBs, are babies that have been taken from a still mother. A still mother's womb facilitates a connection between the world of the dead and the world of the living granting Bridges operatives who establish a trans connection with the baby the ability to sense BTs. Sam already kind of has this ability through his condition known as Dooms. Doom sufferers have a chiral allergy, which manifests a skin irritation and sudden release of tears. Most importantly, people with Dooms have a greater connection to the beach. There are multiple levels of Dooms and several characters within Death Stranding suffer from it. For example, Sam has Dooms level 2, allowing him the ability to sense BTs but is still unable to see them, hence why he uses a bridge baby. That's also the reason why he doesn't like any forms of physical human contact. After returning to Capital Knot City, Sam is reunited with his sister, Amelie Strand. Amelie tells Sam that she led an expedition over the past three years across the remnants of the continental United States. During that time, she's been at work making contact with the remaining cities and settlements, setting up terminals that would allow them to connect to the chiral network, a system that allows instantaneous communication across vast distances. However, upon reaching the last city on the west coast, Edgenot City, Amelie was captured by an anti-UCA terrorist group called the Homo Demons, explaining why she's a hologram. The Homo Demons and their leader Higgs have been holding her hostage, however they still allow her to freely communicate with Bridges via the network. Amelie tells Sam that he must follow the path of her expedition and use a special key named the Cupid to activate and connect the terminal she left behind. After this, he must rescue Amelie and bring her back so that she can take Bridget's place as the president of the UCA. After some resistance, Sam reluctantly accepts the mission and heads out. The next several hours focus on Sam expanding the chiral network, connecting cities with all confusingly similar names, assist some of the game's side characters, and learn more about the Death Stranding, all while having tons of showers and naked visions on the beach and interruptions from the militaristic spectral entity Clifford Unger. The first of which, though, is Fragile. Fragile and Sam head over to Lake Knot City. There, many of the inhabitants comment on Fragile, giving differing opinions. Some call her a hero, while others say she's evil and not to be trusted. Fragile is quick to shut down these accusations, admitting to Sam that she indeed brought a nuclear bomb into Middle Knot City, but was tricked. Fragile's father was the founder of Fragile Express, her delivery company. When he died, the torch was passed down to her. She eventually merged Fragile Express with another company led by a man named Higgs, who if you remember is now the leader of the Homo Demons. Early on, the two were successful, but as time passed on, Fragile realized Higgs had gone from delivering medicine to guns and bombs. This is what tricked Fragile to lead a nuke into Middle Knot City, resulting in its destruction. After this, Higgs then tries going full Troy Baker on us by sneaking in yet another bomb. Careful, the contents are fragile. 
<laughs> it is. Okay. After tossing it into the tar, Fragile reveals the rest of her story. When Fragile discovered Higgs was bringing another nuke to South Knot City, she managed to steal it away from them, only to fall right into the terrorists' hands. Higgs stripped her down and presented her with a choice save the city by running through timefall or warping out of the area and saving herself. Both Higgs and Fragile have differing levels of dooms, all higher than that of Sam's, allowing them abilities such as teleportation and the summoning of timefall and BTs. Higgs having the most, of course, cause he's evil. Fragile chose to save the city, her body paying a price for South Knot City's continued survival. Before sending her out into the rain, Higgs put a mask over her wanting her face to be a testament to those who crossed him. Fragile tells Sam that he can stop Higgs, and when he does, she wants to be the one to deliver the final blow. No pun intended. Heading back to the base, Sam gets sucked into a huge tornado, placing him smack dab right in the middle of a World War I battlefield. Sam encounters Clifford Unger, and after some trench warfare, quickly dispatches him and escapes. Sam tries to make sense of what just happened, but Mama assures Sam that no time had passed at all. Sam? It's been less than a minute since we last spoke. To investigate this, Sam visits Mama's lab. Mama has mentioned to Sam before that she must always stay in her lab. The reason as to why this is, is definitely not what Sam was expecting. Mama explains to Sam that although her baby is a BT, it is harmless. Mama tells Sam that during a terrorist attack, she was pinned under the rubble while waiting to get a C-section. She inadvertently survived by, quote, giving birth on the other side, resulting in the baby manifesting as a beached thing. Stuck for days, Mama was eventually rescued by Bridges, but could not leave the hospital, as her and her baby were tethered to the accident site. Mama then informs Sam that there's been a malfunction with his cupid. In order to fix it, he needs to find someone named Lachna. Sam does so, but Lachna is not having any of this. Sam then heads back to Mama's lab, where she tells him the rest of her story. Mama reveals that her and Lachna are actually twin sisters born with dooms, and the baby is both of theirs. Together they made half of the chiral network, Mama the hardware, and Lachna the software. Their equal genius and ability to communicate with each other across the world made their bonds so close that they believed that they were the same person in two bodies. Mama's ovaries were unable to fertilize and Lachna's uterus was unable of carrying a child term. While both were initially accepting of these circumstances, Lachna eventually fell in love with a Bridges member. However, he died in an accident, leaving Lachna depressed and suicidal. Mama could feel this and wanting to help her, proposed to Lachna that they should have a baby. Using the deceased sperm, Lachna's eggs, and Mama's uterus, the two sisters were able to create Lachna a child that would be carried to term by Mama. Because of the accident, Mama's bond to Lachna was severed, in both fear and shame over what happened. Mama cut her off from all communications, alienating the twins apart. In probably the longest and most painful part of the game, Sam cuts Mama's umbilical cord to her baby, carries her all the way back to Lachna, and the two make amends. Mama convinces Lachna to help Sam and join the chiral network, then dies. As Mama was no longer properly living, hiding her vitals by leaving one of her cufflinks off her wrist. After trudging through the snow to Mountain Knot City, Deadman tells Sam that there's something wrong with BB, who has now been nicknamed Lou by Sam. Remember when I said carrying Mama was the worst part of the game? Well, I lied. As the next several hours of gameplay force you to not only walk through deep piles of snow, but do so with tons of BTs around and no way to see them. Thanks, game. During his deliveries, Deadman works to fix BB, as well as find out some more information about Sam's apparent trip to World War I. Once he's done, Deadman asks Sam to meet him outside of Mountain Knot City, as there's been another tornado called the Supercell. Next comes probably the biggest mystery in the entirety of Death Stranding. How the heck? Was Dead Man able to haul his big booty up this mountain? And I'm sorry to say, guys, but I can't help you there. Before getting to the top, Dead Man and Sam are swept into yet another war zone, this time World War II, which, if you've seen trailers for Death Stranding, will probably look familiar. Sam is able to locate Dead Man and tells him that Cliff isn't after them, but wants BB. Sam then battles and defeats Cliff a second time taking Cliff's dog tags with him. Back in his private room, Sam confirms to Deadman that Cliff is the same man he's been seeing in his visions. Whenever he hooks up to BB, he sees Cliff. Deadman ensures that these are just some of BB's memories and aren't anything to worry about. To conduct further research on the Death Stranding, Sam is contacted by Hartman, who is located way up in the mountains. Since Mama's body doesn't necrotize, Hartman wishes to run some tests on it. When Sam arrives, he notices why Hartman has the name that he does. <laughs> 
as every 21 minutes he goes into cardiac arrest, only to be shocked back to life three minutes later. His story goes as this. During the death stranding, Hartman was undergoing surgery. This forced the power to go out, killing him. On the beach, he saw many people, among them being his wife and daughter. 21 minutes later, the power came back on and the defibrillators returned him from the dead. He now continues going into cardiac arrest every 21 minutes and spends his time on the beach looking for his lost family. This tragedy parallels with Sam, whose wife and unborn child were killed during a void out, which is one of the contributing factors to him quitting Bridges many years ago. Hartman sends Sam out to do more Bridges work while he researches, and at this point comes probably the best part of this entire game. After doing some more Amazon Prime working, Sam returns to Hartman, who has come to a revelation of sorts. He begins to tell Sam about a being known as an Extinction Entity, or EE. An Extinction Entity is said to be the harbinger of mass extinctions, big surprise there, and is the bridge by which a death stranding occurs. The reason an EE provokes mass extinction is unclear, but they are said to be a natural part of the cycle of life and death. Hartman gives Sam perhaps even a more shocking revelation claim that there has been five other death strandings in the world's existence, with this EE being number six. And in the aftermath, the world is altered to allow new life forms to emerge. Unfortunately, this time around though, this EE is said to trigger an event known as the Last Stranding, which is basically the extinction of all extinctions, total annihilation, final death of every living being. With every terminal connected, it finally comes time to head to Edgenaut City and rescue Amelie. Crossing over the tar, Sam gets to the city only to be stopped by Higgs. After walking through BT blobs that remind me of the Queen Jellyfish from Spongebob, Sam links up Edgenaut City, completing the Chiral Network. Frick yeah, miracle. This accomplishment is soon turned bad, as Higgs rolls in with Amelie and tells Sam that the last stranding is coming no matter what. He brings in a giant BT, which Sam takes down like a total beast. In retreat, Higgs shoots and kills Sam, taking Amelie away. But fret not, because Sam is a repatriate and just heads on back to the world of the living. Needing a way onto the beach, Sam gets the help of Fragile, who sends him in. There, Sam encounters Higgs again, and the two get ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe one last time. The boss fight is split up into three stages, involving some classic Mr. Freeze Batman Arkham sneaking around, and ending with an entire Mortal Kombat looking fisticuff slow-mo battle to the death. Sam defeats Higgs and rescues Amelie, leaving Higgs to be dealt with by Fragile, per her request. The two have this really strange jog along the beach, only for Amelie to tell Sam to hold back while she climbs up some rocks. And here's when the mind melting begins. Sam follows suit, only to see Die Hardman holding a gun up to Bridget. The frick? She's supposed to be dead, man. What the heck is going on? Then Cliff comes out of the water and refers to Die Hardman by his real name. John. Before things get any worse, Amelie comes out of nowhere and sends Sam in the water, pushing him back into the world of the living. Back in his private room, Sam sees a hologram of Dead Man and the others. They tell Sam that they're all back in Capital Knot City, however Fragile has become too weak to send him there as well. Or back to the beach for that matter, meaning that the game makes you literally backtrack the entire map. The entire distance you've traveled for the past 30 hours of gameplay, Kojima says, now walk back with no equipment. What a freaking genius. During this trek, Deadman intervenes a few times talking about Cliff and the BB experiments. This part is kind of important, but basically all you need to know is that Bridget was up to some shady stuff. It's when Sam gets halfway back when another supercell forms, sucking him into yet another war zone with Cliff. Only this time, Cliff responds a lot differently than before, as at the end he explains to Sam that he just wants BB. Back on the other side, Sam relays this information to Deadman. It didn't feel like he was trying to hurt us. It felt like, like he just wanted to talk. This sparks Deadman to bring up a message Die Hardman left before heading to the beach. In it, he brings up some rather interesting accusations. Die Hardman goes on to mention how everyone in Amelie's team was killed, meaning anyone who would have had physical contact with her is dead. He discovered how Bridget's cancer made her unable to have children, and then most shockingly of all, Die Hardman believes that Amelie is the extinction entity. Fragile then comes in to confirm this information, telling Sam what Higgs told her before he died. According to Higgs, he was originally approached by Amelie to lead the homo demons, giving his ammunitions and dooms by her. Obviously, Sam doesn't want to believe it. 
He continues on back to Capital Knot, and after fighting the final boss, which literally just flies in the air and doesn't do anything, Sam delivers his final package to Fragile, which are cryptobites to aid her back to health. The group is told by Hartman that Amelie's beach is on another plane, comparing everyone's beach to capillaries while Amelie's is the heart. While there, Sam will have two options. He can either convince Amelie to not end the world, or he can kill her, but doing so would mean he would be stranded on the beach forever. Sam continues to be super macho hero guy and accepts the mission, leaving Lou with Deadman. It's not long on Amelie's beach before she confronts Sam. It's soon revealed to him that Bridget and Amelie are not mother and daughter at all, but are instead the same person. Bridget being the physical body in the world of the living, Amelie being her soul living on the beach at all times. This explains why Bridget had health complications when she was younger, as her body and soul were literally split across two worlds. This also explains why Amelie is always a hologram and never seems to age, which is referred to multiple times throughout the game. Been 10 years since you saw each other, right? And in all that time, she hasn't aged a day. Bridget and Amelie are confirmed to be an extinction entity, said to bring upon the last stranding. Amelie confronts Sam with two options stay on the beach with her and end all of existence now in a flash, or cut Amelie and her beach loose, stopping the last stranding from invading their world. Doing so would disconnect Amelie from everything and would give the world of the living an unknown amount of extra time, as extinction is inevitable to happen at some point, phrasing it as, humanity can live to die another day. In the end, Sam chooses a nice warm hug. While Amelie can't leave, she does get convinced by Sam to disconnect her beach from the rest of existence. Why do you have to stay on the beach? Sam, I am the beach. And I must stay here and ensure that the extinction happens. Even if it takes tens or hundreds of thousands of years. Alone? In the aftermath, Sam is brought back to his own beach seeing the other five extinction entities floating in the sky, which if you recall, has happened a couple other times throughout the game. Since the credits rolled, you'd think the game is now over, but Kojima has got you fooled because there's an entire hour more of cutscenes to watch. Deadman pulls Sam out of his beach, explaining that after a month they were able to find him via the gun given him by Amelie, the same gun that linked Die Hardman and Cliff to Amelie's beach, which should make more sense in a little bit. Di Hardman takes over Bridges and gives a formal speech to the newly connected nation, but Sam isn't having any of it and walks out. After this, Di Hardman confesses to Sam that it was him who killed Clifford Unger, and doing so makes him have a complete mental breakdown. Sam meets back up with Deadman, who has some bad news. BB has died, and Deadman tells Sam that he must take BB to the incinerator to prevent necrosis. Sam thanks Deadman for all that he's done and gets over his fear of human touch by doing this. so we cut onions. Before heading out, Sam runs into Fragile. She asks Sam to work for Fragile Express, but he declines. Fragile then tells Sam she didn't kill Higgs and instead gave him a choice. In the end, Higgs chose death instead of being stranded on the beach, taking his own life. Sam takes BB to the incinerator, and upon hooking it up one last time, he begins to see more visions. Many of these are instances of the same memories of Cliff seen throughout the game, but instead of them taking place in the perspective of BB's pod, they're all seen in full cinematic realism. Clifford Unger served in US Special Forces for many years, explaining why he always comes back in various war scenarios. He was known for always bringing back his unit alive, most notably John, who due to this fact was nicknamed Die Hard Man. Cliff and his wife Lisa Bridges were expecting a child when tragedy struck, leaving Lisa brain dead. Desperate to save his family, Cliff brought them to Bridges, fully unaware of what Bridget planned to do with them. Bridges put Lisa under life support to prevent necrosis, while their unborn child was put inside a tank of amniotic fluid, which without Cliff's knowledge, made his unborn child a prime candidate for the Bridge Baby program. Die Hardman, or John, now working security for Bridges, warned Cliff that Bridget planned to move BB to another facility. Despite his allegiance to the country, John didn't want Cliff to suffer any longer and gave him an opportunity to escape. With no hope, Cliff killed his wife and tried escaping with BB. This quickly took a turn for the worse, as despite John's help, Cliff became cornered and riddled with bullets. In an attempt to save BB, Bridget ordered John to kill Cliff, which he did. Well, kind of. Bridget seemed to help out a little bit. Doing so accidentally killed BB as well, who was taken out of his pod by Cliff. 
To counteract this, Bridget went to the beach as Amelie and brought the baby back to life, making it a repatriate, as well as inadvertently allowing BTs to cross over from the other side, fully setting the Death Stranding in motion. With his connection severed and therefore useless as a bridge baby, Bridget decided to raise the BB as her own son, meaning that this entire time, Cliff never wanted Lou. He wanted his own child, Sam Bridges. Sam. Sam. Back in the world of the living, Sam can't bring himself to incinerate Lou. Instead, he burns his cufflinks and takes Lou out of the pod. After pleading and struggling, Sam is able to resuscitate Lou back to life. The game ends with a timefall storm ending, Sam getting the family he always wanted, and human life living on. After the credits, we see Sam referring to Lou as Louise, confirming that she is in fact a girl. And that guys is the entire story and ending of Death Stranding explained. Wow, that was a lot. Did I leave anything super important out? Are there parts still confusing you? Make sure to let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating is always appreciated. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. Next week, we're doing the same thing, same time on EA's Star Wars. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.